Hey guys, I'm the Hacksmith. This is Make It Real, where we take fictional ideas from comics, movies, and video games and make real working prototypes. Today, today, we're making the Mandalorian's flamethrower gauntlet. Except, this isn't Make It Real, and I'm not the Hacksmith. Welcome to Jake Makes, everybody. Mandalorians are stinking awesome. I feel like that goes without saying. The weapons, the armor, the beautiful helmet, the helmet. Did I say the helmet? Did I mention the gauntlets? The gauntlets are awesome. They've got all kinds of different weapons on them, from rockets to bullet shooty thingies to flamethrowers. The flamethrowers are the best part, obviously. I mean, who doesn't want to be able to shoot flamethrowers out of their wrist? It's amazing, it's super cool, so... Obviously, we're gonna build one. <laughs> so, obviously, we're doing armor. Templates are the first thing to do. <laughs> now, the trick for these gauntlets is it's not the same width front and back. The front is supposed to be smaller than the back. Okay, here we are. Now, I'm not going to be giving you the templates for this because I don't feel like doing it. You definitely want to take advantage of the flat edges already there because it's a lot easier to have to cut out less of those flat edges. Bada boom, bada bam. This stuff is 16 gauge. <coughs> now this stuff is 16 gauge steel. It's pretty thick and it's going to be difficult to bend. I could set the uh, L bracket things up in my vise and hammer on it with a hammer forever and I could bend it like that I guess but it's gonna be very very difficult. Uh, if I try to do that because it's 16 gauge steel and it's thicker than the other stuff I've been using. So I think it's time to invest in a sheet metal brake that will help me make these bends easier. So we're gonna run up to Harbor Freight and buy their cheapest sheet metal brake. I don't know why it's called a brake, it's a tool for bending sheet metal. So basically, this thing works by taking this flat piece of metal, taking the piece of metal that you actually want to bend, put the piece of metal that you want to bend under the piece of metal, you get you some clamps, and you clamp the piece of metal on top of the piece of metal. Can you keep the pieces of metal straight that we're talking about? It's gonna be a lot of little bends. Ugh. 
bit of a pain and you can kind of see the little ridges but for the most part i'm pretty happy with it this uh piano hinge is going to be connecting the two halves together so it can fold open and you can put your arm in easily mark along the edge good sharp bend There we go. <laughs> Tell you what, magnets. This is a super strong magnet I bought at Harbor Freight when I was there. They are awesome. It's just holding that hinge on there and I can test the fit and see how it'll work and everything. <laughs> oh man. Oh geez, that is awesome. I've got this extra bit of cutoff material here that I am going to weld to the side. It will both look good and kind of hold everything in shape a little bit more. I've made a couple different flamethrowers before. I made one, like, hand-mounted one that was really, really lame, and the video is super cringy, so don't go watch that one. Then I also made a Nerf gun flamethrower that's kind of like the boring company flamethrower that's powered by propane. That video is actually pretty cool. Go watch that. This flamethrower is going to work differently than those two previous flamethrowers because this one's going to be gas-powered as in gasoline. When it comes to flamethrowers, you've got two basic different kinds that you'll see around. Liquid fuel flame, liquid fuel flamethrowers and gas fuel flamethrowers. I'm not talking about gasoline, I'm talking about gas, as in liquid, gas, or solid. The three states of stuff, you know, science. Gas flamethrowers are very, very simple. You take a flammable gas like propane, butane, I can't think of another one right now, and then you just connect that directly to a valve system and then add a light and the propellant and the fuel is contained in the same thing. Liquid fuel flamethrowers are the big bad military grade ones. They shoot farther and they can use a number of different kinds of liquid fuel because you're not dependent on the pressurized gas. You can fill the tank with anything you want. They are generally pressurized by a non-flammable gas like CO2. That CO2 tank feeds into a larger tank that is then filled with, say, gasoline. Connecting to your valve system, pull the trigger, the CO2 forces the gasoline out like a big giant water gun. I'm going to be using the liquid one for this because I haven't done it yet and because I want a larger flame than a propane one would give me. Okay, now you know the hand thing. Here. That piece right there, focus camera focus. I went ahead and cut out a paper template here. Trace it out, cut it out. Bend the metal and then attach it to the glow. Bitch. You saw I painted.
The thing that makes these kinds of props look really cool is the detail. And the trick for detailing is layers. You already saw the handpiece, and while it looks pretty good, just like this, it looks better if you add an extra layer onto it. That one extra layer makes the detail and the looks of it go up a whole nother notch. There's a bare spot right here, got these nails. I'm going to attach these, and then that's going to go right on top. Now we've got an extra added little gun on the front. It's these little details like this that are key that make the whole thing look a million times better. Got everything clamped down as much as I can here. Hopefully everything stays put. We get straight holes drilled. Otherwise, this is not gonna work very well. Oh, I can't see what it's doing. Onto the flamethrower barrel thingy. We've got our square tube. It's going to need to overlap the glove a little bit so I don't burn my fingers off. Say the flame actually came from like right here out, I would have a whole lot of fire right on my hand and even though I am using a thick welding glove, it would still be too dangerous. Oh yeah. That worked better than I thought it would. <laughs> oh you did. Here's how the flamethrower is going to work. I shouldn't have done that in that voice. We're going to take a paintball CO2 tank. We're going to put a regulator on that CO2 tank to regulate it down to at max 160 PSI. Hopefully that stops leaking. We're going to pipe that CO2 into this empty fire extinguisher, which is going to be our fuel tank. The irony is hilarious. Then we're going to pipe this to this solenoid valve, which is controlled by a button. You hit the button, fire. First thing to do is tap this nozzle out. Let's see if that worked. Hooray! I can breathe again. As you can see, I've already cleaned out the white powder, so it's completely empty. Eh. I was expecting, after I said completely empty, something would fall out of it. X marks the spot. This one will probably be harder because this is steel, not aluminum. Y'all, you have no idea how surprised I am. This project hasn't catastrophically failed yet. I'm hesitant to say it out loud, but I think it worked. Now what I'm gonna do for the ignition system is pretty cool. Check this out. This right here is a voltage booster. It takes regular low voltage like uh, these AA batteries, which I have together, so they make somewhere above three volts, four and a half volts, I think, all together. And it takes it and turns it way up higher. So if I go ahead and touch these together, Just so you know, I'm gonna have links to most of these parts in the description down below in case any of you want to build something similar to this. Not that I recommend or condone building something similar to this, I'm just saying I'll have links down below. <laughs> And you hit the front button. <laughs> this is to make it tight inside the square tube. 
This is a 12 volt solenoid. We've got two nine volts put together. That's 18 volts. That's more than what we need. Okay, moment of truth. Perfect, now let's see if we can get it all to fit. I made this thing out of cardboard, a bike helmet, a lot of hot glue, and a plastic bucket, like, a long time ago. And this is where I get you, because we're not gonna be testing it in this video, you're gonna have to wait till the very next video, because I had some complications go on last minute when I was going to test it, that we're gonna have to resolve before we can test it, and, uh... Time is slipping by, and I wanna have this posted before the next episode of The Mandalorian comes out, so, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna start ending these project videos with a tool recommendation for you. Today, I am recommending a drill-mounted wire brush. These are awesome, okay? Y'all all need to own one. I have used this so much on this project for cleaning up the metal, after sanding the metal, evening it out, making all the pieces match each other, giving everything a nice brushed finish. Like, this has probably been my most used thing on this project besides an angle grinder. Really, really great for getting the rust off of old tools and giving them a nice finish just right off. You don't have to sand it, you don't have to grind it. All you gotta do is that and it looks beautiful. It's what I do on my forged scale instead of grinding it all off to give it a nice even smooth finish. Really, I could keep talking about it for a while, but it's really great. You should really get yourself one or two or whatever. Links in the description below to where you can find some. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, get off your behind, get off YouTube, go out into the world and build something awesome. Until next time, Jake out.